McLaren had a massive drop in performance in the past race in Spa, coming from two consecutive weekends finishing P2 with Norris. And it seems like the Belgian GP has showcased the real face of the Woking base squad. While we were led to believe that either Norris or Piastri would be able to fight for a race win further down the road, it seems like this is going to be quite an impossible finish. And according to Norris, the disappointment that they witnessed in Spa is going to happen a lot more throughout the course of the 20. 23 season. So is the McLaren hype officially over and have they dropped the ball before they even picked themselves up properly? One of the most pleasant surprises in 2023 has definitely been McLaren, especially since their start of the season was troublesome to say the least. The Woking base squad has not been able to understand where they're losing a lot of their performance since the beginning of the season. And Andrea Stella has pointed out quite a few mistakes on the MCL 60 as they entered the 2023 campaign. Still, a couple of upgrades in Baku, followed by the massive philosophy change in Austria and Silverstone, saw not Norris gathered two P2 finishes consecutively, while Piastri was able to finish P4 and P5 in Silverstone and Budapest, respectively. All of this brought McLaren into the conversation as one of the teams with the most potential to win second place in the Constructors' Championship. But Spa has brought the hopes down to a maximum point, especially given the fact that McLaren had a very solid qualifying pace and Piastri's sprint qualifying was phenomenal, being only 11 hundredths of a second behind the two-time world champion Verstappen. Although he was criticised for his lack of experience regarding the Turn 1 incident with signs, the fact that Piastri is one of the greatest young drivers out there stands as it is, as Norris himself also said that the Aussie is pushing himself to greater lengths in order to achieve what he would have done easily with Ricardo as his teammate. But now it seems like the fairy tale of McLaren has come to an end. And although they still plan to introduce upgrades on their car in 2023, something that we'll talk about in the second half of this video, it seems like it's going to be a failed mission before it's even started properly. Norris has bashed the team's performance in Spa, saying that he was heavily disappointed by the lack of speed of his car in McLaren, especially because he and Piastri headed in this weekend with an extraordinary lot of hope. Although Norris' qualifying pace was definitely questionable due to him sustaining damage on the floor after going wide in one of the high demanding turns in Spa, many expected him to not have any issues climbing all the way to P3 and to take the podium finish right behind Behind the duo of Red Bull. But that turned out to be horribly wrong. And when talking about this matter, Norris pinpointed the main difference that McLaren had compared to the rest of the grid. As he went on to elaborate, I don't think we've had the optimal wing settings. We just haven't been able to focus on what we wanted to because we bought a whole new car and not a lot of the focus was on doing that, which is the correct thing to do because you know there's only three or four races which are probably as low downforce as this. So maybe we'll put a bit more focus on, but all of our focus was on just trying to deliver the new car that we've had a few weeks ago and that's clearly delivered us two podiums. But this is not what disappointed McLaren fans. It's the fact that Norris has pinpointed the fact that Mercedes are still the better team compared to them. And more often than not, they're going to find themselves in this situation, which would prohibit them from winning race podiums and eventually catch up to the rest of the grid ahead. McLaren lost a lot of points in the beginning of the race. And while Silverstone and Budapest have shown that they have what it takes to turn things around in the second half of the season, backed with Piastri's P2 finish in the sprint race, the long run pace of the MCL 60 is yet to be improved and Norris continued to say I'd much rather take that and a couple of bad weekends than just be below par the whole time but yeah this is where we are I think even on tyre deg we went back to normal we were pretty shocking with tyre deg again on all tyres soft medium and hard so like I said I'm kind of happy it happened in a way We've had some good weekends, but we're not where we need to be. We're not up racing with Mercedes and all of those cars. They're clearly another step ahead of us still. This comes as a massive disappointment for all F1 fans out there, not just the Papaya Nation, because it was evident that the rise in form and finding one second performance out of an upgrade that didn't seem to have been that promising from the first try is something that doesn't happen that often in the F1 world. 
Still, other teams, like Mercedes, praised what McLaren were able to achieve, and Wolf even went one step further and said that McLaren's example of finding pace from upgrades in this strictly technical regulated era is something that should motivate them as well and proves the entire F1 world that it is possible to beat Red Bull once you find a proper upgrade package for your challenger. And with Norris' latest statement, it seems like we've been left out in the dry and McLaren isn't as competitive as we'd like them to be. So with this in mind, one couldn't help but wonder, is this actually the end of the fairy tale of the Woking base squad? Occasional podium finishes could happen, and with the current pace of Norris and Piastri, I don't think that McLaren are actually that far off Red Bull. But the fact that the Brit was so off the pace compared to the leading pack and finished only P7 behind Alonso and Russell, who were much slower than him in the previous racing weekends, goes to show there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on the MCL 60 if they want to be competing with Red Bull for frequent podium finishes and race wins. After all, it doesn't matter where they finish because there is only one driver up in the front, but McLaren is following a very promising path, one that many other teams are reluctant to follow. Continue with the upgrades for the remainder of the 2023 season and hope that by Abu Dhabi, they'll have a solid foundation in which they can build the car for the upcoming campaign. This is something that Zach Brown has talked about and has given a lot of hope to the McLaren fans amid all of the negative connotations from Lando Norris as the Woking Base squad's boss went on to elaborate. We're pretty much staying the same. Everything that we're learning this season applies then to next season. So we're head down, we're full throttle. We have more developments coming. We'll have some stuff, some big stuff later in the year, and I think we just keep pushing. We see how quickly it can change. You look at Alfa Romeo, they were ninth, 10th in the championship, and then they were quick in qualifying, and Williams has been in Q3. So it's close. I don't think we can sit here and assume anything. When it comes to the upgrades, actually, we realized that we need, from a design production point of view, a bit more time to complete the full round. So what we will actually see is that there will be some new parts coming in the next races and, above all, post-shutdown. While Norris' comments are definitely bad news for the entire F1 world, his belief that McLaren is not the second fastest team and Mercedes still holds this title might be a bit unfounded, as it seems like the Woking base squad is now heavily focused on making it work for the rest of the 2023 season and for all the right reasons. Red Bull is yet to face the handicap from their sporting penalty of breaching the budget cap in 2021, and they are yet again related to having committed a second consecutive breach, something that could see McLaren propel themselves to the top of the grid if they're a bit lucky and hire the right staff, a process that they have been continuously doing for the last couple of months. With this in mind, what do you think about the potential that McLaren holds within themselves? Do you agree with Norris' comments that the team is not yet the second fastest? Or do you think that the bad showing in Spa was just a one-race bad experience? Maybe they will bounce back stronger than ever in Zandvoort. Let us know in the comments below.